Welcome back to the Thinkorswim tutorial series. Today we're going to cover chart customization and adding studies to our charts. Let's go ahead and jump right into uh, how to add studies on your chart. Now the way that you're going to do that is click on this little beaker icon up here at the top. And from there we can see all the studies on the left hand side that we can add and all the studies we currently have on our chart on the right. Now you can see that they're all empty so we don't have any studies on our chart right now. If we wanted to add one we can either scroll through this list and find the name we're looking for. Or if we already know the name of the study, we can just type it in this black box up at the top. Now for this example, we'll go ahead and type in RSI. And we can see it populates in the results right here. We'll click on the very top one, RSI. And we'll hit Add Selected. Now we see it populates over here on the right. And we can see that it automatically populates as a lower study. And Thinkorswim will typically recognize whether or not it's supposed to be a lower study if it goes on the actual price graph itself. Uh, but if you want to move it to another spot, you can always click on it and drag it to the spot you want it to go. Now, we do want uh, the RSI to be a lower study, so we'll move it back down. And once we hit OK, we can actually see it automatically populate on our charts. And if we change this, uh, this symbol up here at the top from, let's say, Apple to MU, we can see that that RSI remains on our chart up there. Now, let's say we wanted to edit this study a little bit. We wanted to change the oversold or overbought indicator uh, right now. You can see that the overbought's at 70 and the oversold right now is at 30. Let's say we wanted to change that, maybe it'll be a little bit more conservative and change it to 80 and 20. We can do that really easily by coming up here to the edit studies icon again. Now from there, we're gonna go ahead and click on the little gear icon on the far right hand side. And from there, we can actually see the inputs that we could change. So right now we wanted to change that overbought to 80 and we wanted to change the oversold to 20. So we'll go ahead and change that. Now let's say we also wanted to change the color of the RSI line. Right now it's red for overbought and blue for oversold. Let's say we want to change that oversold to a green indicator. Go ahead and change that there. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. Then we'll hit OK one more time and we can see those changes actually take effect. We can see that the, the overbought changed from 70 to 80, oversold changed from 30 to 20. Let's go ahead and change a couple more or add a couple more studies just so we can get some practice with it. Come on back up to the edit studies icon. This case, we'll go ahead and add something uh, like the simple moving average. So we'll go ahead and type in simple. We can see simple moving average in here, and we're going to add two of them. We're going to add the 9-day simple moving average and the 21-day simple moving average. So we'll go ahead and click on it, and we'll hit add selected twice. Now from there, we can see that it automatically populates a 9-day simple moving average, and it does that twice. So remember, we need to edit one of those. So we're going to change this one on the bottom. We're going to change this one to the 21-day simple moving average. So we'll go ahead and type in 21 there. Now we can see that it's blue, which means the other one's going to be blue as well, and we don't want them to be the same color. So we'll go ahead and click on that, and we're going to change it to a purple line. Now we'll go ahead and hit OK. We can see that we've now got the 9-day simple moving average, the 21, and our RSI. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And now we can see that the 9-day simple moving average and 21 are on our chart plotted up here at the top. Let's go ahead and add one more just for practice. Edit Studies. Click in the black box up at the top and we'll type in MACD. We'll go ahead and click on that and hit Add Selected. Now we're not going to edit anything, but I just wanted you to see that you can see that it's going to populate as a lower study and it populates right below RSI. So when we click OK, we can see it pop up right down here at the bottom. Now let's say we wanted to see this same set of studies on multiple charts at the exact same time. We're going to come up here to the top right hand corner and click on this box up here. From there, we're going to highlight how many charts we actually want to see. In this case, we just want to see two side by side. So we're going to go ahead and click on the second chart there. And we're going to see that it pops up here at the top. We'll go ahead and throw in another symbol. Let's say we want to look at Apple again. We'll throw that in there. And we notice that this chart has defaulted to a completely new template. So let's say we wanted to make this easier on ourselves and just quickly transfer all these studies we've got on the left hand chart and just move them over to the right. What we're going to do is actually save these studies as a study set. So come on up here to the studies icon. Go ahead and go to save study set. And we'll go ahead and name this as test one. And we'll go ahead and save it. Now we're going to come over here to the same icon in the top right hand corner for this chart. Go to load study set and we're going to load test one. Now once we load it, we can see that all those studies automatically carry over the simple moving averages, the RSI and the MACD. Now I would definitely recommend you save your study sets uh, just to make it a lot easier as you open up 
multiple different charts. It's easier to load them rather than finding each one every single time and, and adding it to your chart and customizing it. Next, we'll go ahead and jump into chart customization. So let's go ahead and go back to one single chart. Now you can edit the chart in many different ways, whether that be the appearance, the type of chart, uh, the volume bars. So let's just go ahead and jump into it and start with appearance. Now the way that we're gonna do that is by clicking on the chart settings button up here at the top. It looks like a little gear icon. Go ahead and click on that. Once it loads, we're gonna come over here to the appearance tab. So go ahead and click on that. Now from here, we can change quite a few different things. First thing, if we wanted to fill up those candles, that's probably a question I get asked most often. We're gonna go ahead and check mark the fill up icon and we can see that the candlesticks now fill up uh, when the stock price closes higher than it opens. We can also change the color of those candlesticks if we really wanted to. Not that I recommend it, but if you wanted these green candles to always be blue and you wanted the red candles to always be yellow, we can change that and we can see it reflected over here on the right. Now let's go ahead and change that back to normal. There we go. Now we can also change the background of the chart itself. Um, instead of changing the entire template for think or swim, you can just change the chart background. So from here we can click on this and let's say we wanted it to be like a light gray background We can go ahead and click on that. And let's say we also wanted to change the volume bars from this blue color that we see here to red and green, just like the candlesticks. We'll come over here to where it says color as symbol ticks and we'll click on that little box. And there we just changed quite a few of our appearance settings for the chart. Let's go ahead and click okay and see how that affects our chart. Now from there we can decide whether or not that's too bright or too dark or if we like it or not. Uh, we can always come back here to the chart settings button, go back to appearance. I think that's a little bit too light. We'll go back to more of a dark screen and go ahead and click OK. That looks a little bit better. Uh, now you can also change the style of the chart itself. Maybe you don't want to use candlesticks. Maybe you wanted to use a bar or maybe you want to use a line graph. Uh, the way that we're going to do that is come up here to style, come down here to chart type. And from there, we can change the type of chart that we're using. Say we want to see a bar chart. Maybe we want to see a Heikenashi. Maybe we wanted to see a line chart. So it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is come to style, chart type, and change it to whatever type of chart you want to see. Now, one other thing we should probably cover is actually changing the time frame of the chart that we're looking at. Now you can always see the, the time frame of the chart here in the upper left hand corner. So we can see that this is a one year, one day chart, which really just means we're looking back an entire year of time. And each one of those candlesticks right now represents an entire day of trading. And wherever we hover our mouse, if we look in the upper left hand corner, it will tell us the day of that candle. So in this case, we're looking at April 9th of 2020. It'll tell us what that candlestick opened up at, what its high of the day was, what its low of the day was, what it closed at that day, and what its range between the high and the low was. So it gives us a lot of information up there in the top left hand corner. Now, if we wanted to change that time frame, maybe we we're planning on day trading and we wanted a much more narrow focus, we can come up here to the time frame button, which says D for day right now. Go ahead and click on that. And from there, we could change it to one day, one minute. So now we're looking back only 24 hours and each one of those green and red candles we see on our screen represents one minute of trading. Now we can zoom in a couple of different ways. We can either click down with our mouse and drag and we're gonna see that it highlights that section. Now, when we let go of our mouse, it's gonna zoom in on that section that we just highlighted. Now, we can also just use these icons down here in the bottom right-hand corner, the magnifying glasses. If we click the plus sign, it'll zoom us in. If we click the minus sign, it'll zoom us out. Now, if we double click on our chart, it'll take us back to the default view, which is that 24 hour viewpoint the entire day. Um, but from up here, we can change those defaults that we see right now. These are just the, the defaults that Thinkorsim provides. You can always create your own time frame up here under time frame and set whatever time frame you like to see, whether that be a, actually based on a time or based off of a uh, number of trades that happen, whether it be a tick chart, a range chart. You got a lot of customization here. You can click this star icon down here in the bottom left hand corner and it'll always show up on your favorites tab up here at the top. Just make it easier for you to bounce back and forth to the time frames you like to use. Now there is one more thing I'd like to show you and that's how to add an expansion area to your chart. A lot of people like to create drawings which will extend beyond the current time. If you notice right here on the far right hand side, the current chart ends at the last minute of trading. So if we wanted to expand that a little bit because we wanted to draw a trend line further out in time, we can come up here to the chart settings button again, the little gear icon. From there we can go to time axis. And right here on the top right hand corner, we see the expansion area. And let's say we wanted to add 20 bars to the right and click OK. We see that the expansion area opens on the right hand side. So now we could draw a trend line out into the future if we needed to. 
One other thing I'd like to point out is how you can view corporate actions on a chart. So let's go to a wider time frame, maybe go to three years, and we can see these little icons on the bottom of your screen. Now you're gonna see these everywhere on the platform, whether they be on the monitor page, on your watch list, or on the chart in this case. Uh, and these are just trying to point out big events that happened for this company. Now in this case, when you see the little red circle and the little blue circle, that really just means an earnings announcement. So if we hover our mouse over this earnings announcement right here, we can see how much the company made that quarter versus what was actually expected. And then the little red circle is actually the earnings conference call if you wanted to listen to the CEO and CFO talk about that quarter's earnings. Now, the very last thing I'll talk about today is how to create an actual drawing on this chart. It's, it's fairly easy, and we'll probably talk about how to make this even simpler going forward. All you have to do is click on this drawings icon in the top right-hand corner. Go to drawing tools and you're going to get a toolbar of all the drawing tools that are available to you now the probably the most common you're going to use are going to be like a trend line or a price line so we'll go ahead and click on trend line for right now and you're not going to be doing any dragging with this it's simply point and click so let's say we want to draw a trend line from this point to this point all we're going to do is click down and move our mouse up to the next point and click down again now we can actually change the properties of this line as well. If we wanted to change the color, the thickness, add a note to it, all we have to do is right click on the line itself, go to edit properties. And from there we can change the name of it. We can change the color, the width of the line. And let's go ahead and do some of those things. We'll change the color to a white line. We'll make it a bit thicker and we're gonna name it channel up. Now we're gonna make it so that actual name is visible right here where it says always, and we'll go ahead and click okay. So now we just changed the width of that line, the thickness, and we added this label so we can actually see the range of that line itself. Now, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and delete it. Really easy, all we have to do is right click on the line and say remove drawing. Now an easier way to access your drawing tools is actually using your mouse and using that scroll or I don't know the name of it, but using the scroller in the center of your mouse and actually just clicking down on it. And that'll automatically bring up our drawing tools in the center. And then we can go back to the pointer in this case. And now we're back to normal. So again, all we have to do is click on that little center dial on the mouse, get our drawing tools. And in this case, we'll do a price line, which is the dollar sign over the line. And we'll go ahead and click twice. And this will be our resistance line right there. And let's say this was our support. We'll double click there. And there we go. And we're gonna go ahead and click on that center icon of the mouse again, go back to the pointer and we're good to go. Now I know we covered a lot in a very short amount of time, so please rewatch the video if you miss anything or leave a comment down below if there's anything else you'd like me to expand upon in Thinkorswim. I will be doing more of these Thinkorswim tutorial series and probably an overarching tutorial about the platform, things I think that most people will need to know. Uh, but please let me know if there's certain topics you'd like me to touch on. But otherwise, please subscribe if you like this type of content and I'll catch you on the next one. I've been up for three nights